Hey guys, so I already did the eyes just so I could do the rest of the face with some of the new products that I got. Okay, so I have one bag full of Merit Beauty stuff and then another bag full of the other stuff I got. I'm not gonna show or like really swatch anything in here because I wanna do a completely different video trying this out for the first time. So I was gonna buy the detail set directly from Merit Beauty. But the fact that you have to pay for return shipping if you didn't like something, I was like, uh, I could just buy all of this directly from Sephora and if I want to return something, I can just go to Sephora versus paying for return shipping. So with the detail set, it's basically everything from their brand except their foundation and contour and I couldn't get both of those because both of those have coconut in them and the blushes don't. I emailed them and asked them because the blushes were what I wanted to try out. So this is the shade Beverly Hills. That does not look good. I got the shade Bounce. This is a more rosy highlighter. So again, this is Bounce. It doesn't look like it's been swatched. It just doesn't look smooth like it. Oh, and it smells like, not chalk. Hold on. This doesn't smell like that, okay. There's that smell, I swear. There's so many makeup products that smell like this. Like, I don't know why I keep wanting to say chalk. Okay, anyways, we'll see how that works on my face. So I wanna do another video. I apologize, cause I'm not gonna open up these products either for a Holy Grails video because there are so many Holy Grail makeup products that I've just never tried and I've been wanting to try. Okay, like Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk, the lipstick and the blush. I feel like these are such Holy Grails, like just for how many years it's all I hear about. I swear every time I see someone using this on a makeup video and then opening this up, I just giggle cause I mean, it looks like a nipple. We all know this. <laughs> so that is a shade Pillow Talk. Ooh. I know you're probably like, I already know what that shade looks like, Sasha. Another product in my Holy Grail video is gonna be this Hourglass Concealer. So a lot of these things are, like I said, for videos. So if I'm being completely real here, if I wasn't doing fun makeup videos and it was just me, myself, getting stuff I want, there'd probably be only two things I'd be getting from the savings event. And one of them would be this Pharmacy Brighten Up uh, Dark Spot Toner. I don't have high hopes for this because I've tried a million things and none of them really worked but I'm, there's still a little part of me where I really want it to work. I know it probably will just a tiny bit but it's not gonna get rid of my dark spots completely. I have both high and low expectations for this. Ooh, it's in a nice fancy glass bottle. Either you will see this in my favorites videos or you will not. Okay, and the only other thing that I would have probably gotten is this Give. I found that it's called Give. I was calling it GXV this whole time. And we're gonna try this on today. This is obviously the black one in the shade Spiderwebs. I love these really nice creamy ones. I have a feeling it's kind of like Urban Decay's. I used to spend money on like the Urban Decay ones. It's like, what, 23 bucks? But I was like, you know what? I'll just go with NYX. NYX is like, what? five six dollars for the eyeliner and it works the same it's just as creamy okay so we have three more things well technically five more things so let's start with say say do blush in the shade rosy i swatched all of their blushes and this is the one i like the most and again i emailed them and asked if there was any coconut ingredients in this and they said there were not that already looks like a really pretty shade and we're also trying on the rare beauty soft pinch blush i'll try one on this side and one on this side just so i can see how both of them feel and differentiate and i just want to see what all the hype is about like just everyone keeps talking about these hope is the shade i got hope is uh my best friend's wife's name did I get it because of her name? We'll never know. <laughs> but no, honestly, like when I looked through all the colors, I went through TikTok and then searched every single shade and Hope is the one that stood out to me. Oh my gosh. I, I even touched these in store. I just put them in my cart and then picked it up. I never really touched these. This whole time I thought this was a ball, but it's not, it's flat. This whole time I thought it was a ball. Super pretty. After falling in love with the Danessa Myricks blush, I was like, okay, I might wanna try more blushes. So I'm trying not to get the same shades. Like I want a good range. I want mauves and pinks and oranges. This one is more mauvey and the Say one is more like a rose pink. I'm super excited because again, everyone just keeps talking about this. And speaking of Rare Beauty, I actually didn't buy this from the sale. I bought this from their site directly. I just got this in the mail. I think it's cute that it came in a little bag. 
So this is, Sephora doesn't sell this. So it's their set with both their mascara and the eyeliner. The eyeliner is 21 and the mascara is 20. So together that would be 41. On the website, it would be 30. And I was like, okay, perfect. I'd rather buy this directly from their site versus Sephora. But then this was $6 shipping. I'd be saving more during the Sephora sale. So I just closed the website and that was it. And then two days later, Rare Beauty emailed me and were like, hey, here's a free shipping discount code. And I was like, okay, you sold me. I'm definitely gonna get it because now with the free shipping, it would be cheaper than getting it from Sephora. So yeah, if you wanna get free shipping, maybe put something in your cart and wait a few days and you might get an email. That's, I always do that. If I think that there's gonna be a discount or a code, I leave something in my cart and then I wait a few days. We are gonna try the mascara and eyeliner today. I have high hopes. I don't think I've ever seen something come in a plastic bag like this. I wonder why. Maybe so that it doesn't accidentally bleed everywhere. Every time I get bags like these from companies, like I, I don't know what to do with them. Like it's really nice and thick and hold a bunch of your makeup, but this is not something I would use to travel with. Let me know what you use them for because I want to keep this. It's nice and thick and sturdy. Last thing I got was this Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. Foundation is something I do not take lightly because my skin is very sensitive. I've had a lot of foundations that break me out. So it's not something that I just get up and go buy like how I do with eyeliner or eyeshadow. So I got the shade 7.5. I'm in the shade Nude in Too Faced's foundation and this is the closest I got when I was watching it in stores. Okay, so if you are not a crazy person like me and only watched maybe one or two Sephora recommendation videos, I watched like at least 10 to 15. So there was a common theme and I wrote down all the makeup stuff that so many people recommended. So this was one of them. I was not planning on buying any foundations at all, but everyone kept bringing this up. So I have high hopes for this, but at the same time, I don't know who to trust because of the reviews on Sephora, the people didn't like this. We're gonna see who I side with today. So I'm gonna stick to exactly how I put on my foundation. I'm not gonna change it up for this guy. I'm just putting it on a blender. I mean, we're starting out fine. Looks like a foundation. Um, it is not full coverage. I'm sure that's why it's ambient glow. And I think it does say medium coverage on Sephora. Usually with foundations, I just do one pump and it completely takes out all the redness from this side down. And then I do another pump for my forehead and my neck. With my regular foundations, I would need two pumps for my whole face, but I would say for this, maybe two and a half. And I kind of don't want to use more product for a more expensive foundation. But like my redness here, it's not really covering that redness that other foundations covers up. It doesn't look cakey. It looks okay on my pores. It's not really settling into my nose right here that some foundation does, like settles here in the cracks. It's not full coverage. You can see some of my redness. Again, I don't know if you can tell in the camera, but I can tell in the mirror. Some of my redness here is peeking through and here in my cheeks, but I do see the glow. I don't know if that's gonna be a good thing because I do have oily skin. So I don't know how this would work if I wear this outside because am I just gonna look oily way faster than if I used a matte foundation. What's the point of putting a face powder on to mattify this when the whole point of this is to have a soft glow, right? Because you're just defeating the purpose. It feels very light. It doesn't feel cakey. We will see when I'm done with this look if it oxidized or not. I'm kind of in the middle. I like that it's nice and soft and glowy, which a lot of oily girls don't like because we're so used to looking oily. We don't want to look any oilier. But like I said, on the camera, it does look really nice. I just wish it covered up a little bit more. Okay, let me put on concealer and setting powder and I'll be right back. Okay, so, oh my gosh. Looking at in the bathroom mirror, I didn't think you would see it here, but you can see it. Look how much it oxidized. Look at my neck and then look at my face. See with my Too Faced one, it doesn't oxidize and I can actually get away with only putting a foundation on my face. But no, you can clearly see the difference between my face and neck. Dang, I'm like a completely different shade. This is really tan and dark for me. Dude, I feel like I look orange. Oh my gosh, you can see. And then look at my chest. Oh, it looks so bad in the camera. Okay, I'm gonna have to put concealer like a lot of different places. I can see both sides. The girls in the reviews, their problem was with the oxidizing. 
obviously did. And then I can see the influencers who like it because of how it looks and the glow. So I can see that. This is the Hourglass one and this is the Too Faced one. So this has been sitting on my hand for I want to say three, four minutes and the color hasn't changed. You can see that it's a little bit more yellow and brown in this compared to the Too Faced. I swatched so many other colors lighter than this, but none of them looked anywhere close to this shade. See like here it looks lighter. But yeah, it's just a different kind of lightness. So if you're a Too Faced nude like me, don't do 7.5 with Hourglass, go lighter. Okay, it kind of looks better now, now that I smothered my face in powder. Um, hopefully my lighting stays like this because sometimes it either gets really bright and blue or it becomes really orangey. So hopefully it stays in the blue realm because then you'd be able to see how orange the foundation is on my skin. So I'm definitely gonna have to return that. I'm already getting hot under these lights. I can already kind of feel my oil pushing through. I don't see how this would last all day. Right now I'm kind of siding more with my Sephora review girls but I can see what the influencers are saying about how pretty and glowy this foundation looks like. So I'm gonna finish the rest of my eyes. I used my Lime Crime Venus Extra Large Palette. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna let you guys know what a lot of other beauty products people recommended. And all of these products I didn't buy because my skin is very sensitive to coconut ingredients and all these products have coconut. Okay, so number one product we're gonna start from face and then go down. Was the Merit Great Skin Serum. It's like a niacinamide serum. So many influencers were talking about that. For sunscreen, everyone was talking about the Super Goop sunscreen. For concealer, it was the Kosas concealer. For primer, people were talking about Milk's Hydro Grip Primer. For blush, everyone was talking about the House Labs blush. For setting powder, Everyone was talking about the Huda setting powder. That product, that box, every time I see someone bring out the Huda setting powder, I'm like, that is a huge box. I still have this sample size from Laura Mercier. That's how little I use setting powder because I put on my whole face of makeup for my videos and then I go wash it off. So I don't technically need setting powder. Um, say do blush. The one I wanted in general, this was actually on a lot of people's recommendations. So I'm glad that this is something I already had in my cart. The Merit Highlight, that one popped up. Again, the one I showed. The Rare Beauty Highlight, I mean, duh. If I was gonna give a recommendation for highlight, I would have recommended the Rare Beauty one too. The only thing I bought from the million recommendations I watched was the foundation. Oh, not as creamy as I was expecting. I like the Urban Decay one, it melts when you put it on, kind of like wax, but this isn't as creamy, which I actually like because I feel like when it's really creamy, it can easily like bleed. Okay, it's going on nice and smooth. I like that it's sticking on my waterline. I mean, it's a, gonna come off in like five seconds. Like every eyeliner does not stick to my waterline because it gets watery. There's like little clumps when I rub this but like there's little clumps of the eyeliner. You have to blend it out. Okay, that's not blending out really well. It's not blending out at all. It's stuck on there, which is good, obviously, if you don't want your eyeliner to move, but I won't know unless I test it out the whole day to see if my eyeliner moves, but I do want a little bit of give to blend this out. <laughs> I do want a little bit of give to blend this out. It's not blending out, okay. I honestly really thought I was gonna like this. When I'm going like this, it's not smudging. I didn't like that when I put it on, it's very clumpy, like you can still see all the clumps. You see that clump? There's a clump there. There's some clumps there. There's a clump right there. Mm, no, I do not like that. Oh, that sucks. This one, like I had high hopes for because again, I love eyeliner, but damn, I am giving give a hard time because I did not like their eyeshadow and I'm not a fan of this. Okay, let's move on to Rare. Hopefully Rare will make me happy again. Let's try the mascara on the bottom lashes first and see hopefully if it kind of covers all that clumpiness from the Give eyeliner. Very nice and smooth. In my last video, my e.l.f. one where I tried out the mascara, 
I really liked it, but I can already feel the difference between those two. This one's very watery, like it's coating my lashes really easily, like it's nice and smooth. Versus the e.l.f. one, like I had to kind of dig in there. It's making my lashes longer. I'm actually not a fan of that, especially with my lower lashes. I feel like when my lower lashes look long like this, it looks very spidery. And that's why I liked the e.l.f. one, because it kind of did the opposite, like it made them look shorter, but then it made it look like I had more lashes. I like that look more on my eyes. If you want lashes that look super long, holy crap, yeah, that looks really long. Now let's try the eyeliner. I like it's super random that it came in a plastic bag like this. Okay, again, something I also have high hopes for. It's brush tip. Brush tip's not my favorite. Okay. Not the blackest. Like I said in my uh, Sephora haul, when I tested out the new Urban Decay, I noticed that the brush tip eyeliners aren't as pigmented or black versus a felt tip one. Like a felt tip eyeliner is really, really black, but for some reason a brush tip one isn't. Or at least all the brush tip ones I've tried out because this isn't really black either. Not my favorite. I feel like it's not clinging on to some spots of my eye. Like it kind of jumps and misses a spot. I mean, it looks nice on camera. It actually looks really nice and dark on camera, but in person, it's not the darkest. Um, okay, this one I wouldn't recommend. It's not horrible. It's better than the $26 Urban Decay one that I was giving such a hard time with. But yeah, see for the initial swipe, like, doesn't give a lot of pigment. But felt tip doesn't do that. Cause like with felt tip, all the pigment is already there at the top. I really wish you could see this. If I got this from Sephora, I'd probably be returning it. Cause it's giving me the same problem as Urban Decay's in terms of pigmentation and it's just not gliding on smoothly. Okay, so now one thing I would not recommend from Rare Beauty, and I feel like since the tip is really, really thin, like it pushes down easily and is it nice since the tip isn't firm <laughs> and it's very thin at the end, like it bends easily. So it doesn't give a nice like sharp wing at the end because it doesn't have a tip, a firm tip. <laughs> okay, well that sucks. Yeah, I like how the brush feels good on my lashes. Like it's sliding on my lashes really well, if that makes sense. My lashes are so straight, so I feel like you can't really tell what my lashes look like. I did curl them, but for some reason they're looking even more straight. I feel like the best mascara for girls with straight lashes or that points downward is waterproof mascara. So I would still go for a waterproof mascara versus this. Not a huge fan of either of these, but they're not horrible. <laughs> So yeah, I definitely don't recommend the Rare Beauty eyeliner. I put on lashes and then I tried to cover the lash strip with the eyeliner. Wasn't working. I had to bring out my NYX Epic Ink Liner and that worked amazingly. It's so old, but it's still so black. You don't need the Rare Beauty liner. There's a million cheaper, better ones than that. Now on to the fun stuff, the blush. I'm gonna put on lips. This was also not this specific one, but when it comes to lips, I noticed one product that came up a lot was Tarte's Maracuja Lip and it was Tarte's Maracuja lip plump and then lip balm. And I was like, ooh, $24 for a lip balm or a lip plump. This is their Maracuja lipstick, which Sephora doesn't sell and only Tarte does. And I bought this August last year. I didn't really like it, mostly because of the color. But if this is in the same realm and formula as the lip balm, I can see why people like it. It's very nice and juicy. It doesn't fill in weirdly in your cracks. I feel like $24 is a lot for like a lip balm. I bought this when it was 50% off last year and I didn't like it, again, mostly because of shade. This was the most nude shade, and it looked like a normal nude on the arm swatches, right? But in person, it's really pink. It's nice and smooth and juicy. This already feels like a lip balm. Then I wonder what their lip balm and lip plumper feel like. Okay, guys, let's move on to the fun stuff. Last but not least are the blushes. I'm not comparing the colors. I just want to see how the formula works. I'm going to use both of these with a sponge. Oh, that's so pretty. It's so creamy and, yep, very pigmented. I like that it's not streaky. Expected a little bit more purple mauve in there. And again, we're going in with Say's Rosy. This isn't as liquidy or smooth to draw on like the Rare Beauty one was. So this one's the Say one and this one's 
hope. Now compared to this, I can see the mauve in this right there. Okay, first I kind of want to see what it looks like blending with the fingers. It's very easy already blending in with the fingers. I feel like you don't even need a sponge or brush with this. Okay, that's one tiny layer. You can obviously see that there is no blush on this side. With the one tiny dot, it's really nice and vague. So that's personally what I would go for because I don't like a lot of blush. But I am going to do another layer just so you could see the color more. I'm also going to try the Say one just with my fingers. Okay, yeah. Definitely more like baby pink. They both blended out really beautifully with the fingers. I feel like this was easier to blend out with my fingers. This diffused better, which is funny because even though this one's more watery and you think it'd be easier to blend because it's thin and watery, this one actually blended out easier. I feel like with blush, so many of them at the end, when you blend them out, they all look the same. Because honestly, right now, like seeing it on my face, they look exactly the same. So I'm gonna do another layer because surprisingly for me, I actually want more blush. Who am I? <laughs> I'll use the bottom of my beauty blender for this. And then I'll use the other side for the stay side. This is more what everyone's doing. It looks glowy. That is basically covering up my entire face. I'm gonna have to like put concealer here or something. It might as well be my foundation shade. So again, that is hope. Like I said, at the end of it all, I feel like they're all gonna eventually look the same. The Rare Beauty one is more liquidy, but I don't know what it is. I kind of like the safe formula one more. I honestly don't see the need of getting 20 blushes when at the end of the day, they look exactly the same. There's a lot more do, as you can see with the Rare Beauty one, than this, just a little bit, but this is like bam, do. I don't know if I'm liking the Say one just because it's less pigmented. Okay, I'm gonna go and put the concealer on. Since they were so pigmented, they just spread everywhere and it's going like up to my under eye circles. Okay, so I put concealer under my eye, but can you honestly tell me that these do not just look the exact same? Like I said, the Rare Beauty one has more of a glow. Since it's watery, it did diffuse or like spread out way faster and easier than this one did. So I wonder if you should kind of let it set a little bit first. And with this one, it kind of stayed in a spot and then spread versus like water, if that makes sense. I honestly thought I was gonna see what all the hype is about. She has beautiful shades. The packaging is pretty. Maybe it's shade, but I just like the say side more. I feel like at the end of the day, so many blushes just look the same. Maybe when I edit this, I can see if there's a difference. But right now, looking at it here in the camera and in the bathroom mirror, they honestly look exactly the same. I think the say one is like 25 and the Rare Beauty one's 20. Oh, the say one has 12 ml and the rare beauty one has 7.5. So you get way more with the say one. Okay, so then that kind of justifies the price. You still want to know what I think the best one was so far that I've tried? It's the Danessa Myricks one. I just feel like, I don't know if it's the color and because it's so pigmented, but I just need one tiny dab of my sponge butt in there and it looked beautiful. That was one of my favorite makeup looks I did. I'll put it up here so you know what I'm talking about, but I just feel like that made me feel so pretty and girly. It was so smooth and it, it blurred. I mean, that's what it is. It's like a blurring powder. Okay, so well, at least everyone's recommendation for highlight being Rare Beauties that I can... <laughs> why I was gonna say that I can get down with oh my gosh I sound so old I agree with everyone such an amazing highlighter it just looks really smooth on your skin when I try these products or I test out products I want to be wowed enough to keep it but if there's some doubt in my mind like Arr. I don't want to keep it just to keep it you know so that was one of the rare red products in this video why does that always happen to me hopefully since usually when I have a bad makeup or bad product day, usually my next video, I'm in love with the product, so hopefully that's how it goes. Okay, let's do a quick rundown. Foundation, I can see the soft glow. It's beautiful. And now after being under these lights for a while, I don't think it's something for me because I am an oily girl. I'm already getting sweaty and I don't need an extra glow. I have so much redness. I have so many freckles. I prefer a full coverage foundation. So that's not something for me. Again, it oxidizes like crazy. I'm glad my lighting is really bright right now because sometimes it goes in and out. Sometimes it gets really 
really dark and once it goes dark then you can see that I look super tan. I did not like the Gwen Stefani eyeliner. I honestly thought I would. Like you saw there was like little clumps of the eyeliner just falling on my lashes. I did not like Rare Beauty's eyeliner. It's definitely in the bottom. It's down there with the Urban Decay one I just tried. Not a fan. The mascara was okay. I liked how it felt nice and soft. Again, not something I was wowed by. And then the blushes, um, I would actually keep the Say one over the Rare Beauty one. I don't know if it could be just a color. I don't know if I try out different colors from her brand that maybe I'll love it, but I just don't like that this spread out way too easily. Like it was very watery. I kind of needed it to stay a little bit more. I didn't need it glued on there. Like I want it to be nice and spread so I feel like you would need to let this sit for a little bit before spreading it out. I like this one more. I don't know why it felt better and easier spreading out. The pigment was in crazy intense. Like with the whole point of a liquid blush for me personally is to look more natural and I feel like this just did better with that. I can't explain it. So at the end of the day, the only thing that really was okay was the Say Blush. And since the next video is gonna be all about the Merit products I got, hopefully that does better than what happened today. Looking in the monitor, this highlighter just saved my face. Go get that highlighter from that sale if you haven't yet. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, even though a lot kind of went wrong. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.